Okay, so um, this morning I went out for a run. Uh, I got to the four and a half mile point and I started to get some real pain in my left Achilles tendon. Uh, it was a further five miles left before I got home and during that five miles the pain just increased and uh, became by the end really quite uh, sore and debilitating. So what I thought was I will do a series of videos showing you guys how I will treat that injury myself at home. Uh, so if you ever have a similar thing, you can do it to yourselves. Um, so the first thing, this is day one at the minute, you know, like I say, it was painful in the last five miles, going upstairs at the minute, it's quite a two-footed affair, uh, putting pressure through the tendon is quite, quite sore. So I want to decrease the pain and then start to look at maintaining and increasing the function in the tendon, okay? So I'm going to decrease the pain, so I'm going to tape it up. Uh, so I've got rock tape, two strips, uh, and the first thing I want to do is tape the tendon, offload it, and doing so, give it a little bit of a help with the tape, but then get the circulation in and start getting that healing process accelerated going through. Um, so I've got, like I say, two strips. What I did for my first strip is I put it on under my heel, and then I kind of measured middle finger to thumb, like so. And then I cut it off at that point, and then I round the edges of the tape, yeah, so they're nice and smooth, so there's no sharp edges which will catch, uh, catch on clothing and lift it off. So my first strip, what I do is I'm gonna rip the back in and take off about an inch. That inch, I'm gonna place under my heel, no stretch on it at all, just place it down nice and smooth. And then if I secure that with my fingers and pull on the tape, you'll see the backing will come away. I'll take the backing that's left, right? I'll get higher so you can see. And what I'm gonna do, if that's 100% stretch, that's 50, and I go to about 75. And then I'm gonna lay it, we're trying to get the center along the Achilles tendon. And you'll see my foot, so I'll get to here and I'll lay the last bit down with no stretch at all. While I'm doing it, I'm pulling this foot up towards me as much as I can to try and get stretch on the tendon, stretch on the tape, yeah? Now the tape's on, I just smooth it over the tendon so it sits nice and smooth with no creases, yeah? So it was no stretch, 75, no stretch. My second piece, I go from the inside ankle bone to the outside ankle bone, and that's where I cut it. And then again, smoothed off the edges. And now, what I'm, when I put this down, I've got the two malleolus, the ankle bones, I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna head towards, so I'm gonna tape across like that. So I'm gonna rip down the middle and pull, the backing comes away. I can then peel it back and then take this tape to about 100% stretch, lay it straight across the other one, onto the ankle bones and then at the end no stretch always finish with no stretch they're called the anchors okay so no stretch at all over there smooth it down take the printed side of the tape and rub it down to activate the glue okay don't use the tape if you're allergic to blasters don't artificially dry the tape with hair dryers you'll melt it just let it dry naturally pat it down with towels an ankle will last about two to three days just because of the standing water in the shower will get underneath and start to lift this off. Okay, so that's it taped. So that's stage one. So this is all what I'll be doing today. So that's my first step. Second step is I'm thinking, okay, what I don't want to happen is there to be a protective contraction in the calf complex through the tendon and end up with a, some kind of ballerina type foot tomorrow morning where you know you'll get out of bed and the, that first step down is really quite painful, okay? And then you get moving and you feel okay. But we want to sort of mitigate that. So, and this, right, because we're all busy, this will be done tonight. When work's finished, kids are in bed, telly's on, you know, cup of tea, and I can do this while I'm watching the telly, okay? So I've just got myself a belt. You can use a dressing gown cord. You can use anything that is solid. Yeah, don't use an exercise band because we don't want the we don't want to stretch. Yeah, 
And now with this, I've placed it just beneath the toes and I'm gonna elicit a stretch on the tendon. Just take it so I just feel a little bit of a stretch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently push my foot into the belt. That's why we don't want any elasticity and if we want something solid, we can just push into. Not hard, 30% effort. Yeah, 10 seconds and then I'd relax and then I'd start to bring it back just slightly. Feel a bit of a stretch, ease it off. So I'm hanging out on no stretch. I'd hang out there for 10 seconds and then I'd repeat. Push for 10, increase the stretch, back it off, rest for 10. It should be 12, 10, 12, whatever. Yeah, third one, push for 10. I always do 10, it should be 12. And then relax. And on the last one, I'm gonna bring it back. I'll try and keep the knee straight. With a knee straight, you're gonna get gas drop. Without, with a knee bent, you're only gonna get into layers. Yeah. On the last one, I'll hold it for about 20 seconds. And then that's that, okay? And then for the rest of the evening, while I'm watching the telly, all I'm gonna do, double thumbs onto the tendon. See, that's really tender, so I'm not applying much pressure at all. A light pressure, and then lifting the foot. And then relax, come up the tendon slightly higher. Slight pressure, and I'll keep moving up. Lock it, stretch it with the foot, lock it, stretch it with the foot. Does that make sense? So over the tendon site itself, it's very tender. So I'm only applying the lightest pressure and I'm stretching by lifting my toes to my knees. As I come up, it, it's not so tender, so I can put some pressure in there to lock it, stretch it up and then let go. And I would just do this, I'm not gonna say how long for, or how many I do, depends how good the episode is and how quickly I drink my tea, yeah? But while I'm sat there tonight, that's what I'm gonna do, just to, it's like a soft tissue release, lock stretch, one, two release, and I'll work away along there, okay? So at the minute, I haven't used a lot of my time. Yeah, let's see how quick the taking took. The taking should look like that, so I strip up the back and a strip across the ankle. Yeah, that didn't take long at all. The stretch and the soft tissue release I'll do tonight while I'm watching telly. I think I'll do that for half an hour or so. Yeah, an episode. The other thing I'm gonna do, so this is the only thing which is gonna take a little bit of time out of my day, is I'm now thinking ahead, because I'm thinking, right, I wanna rehabilitate this ankle stronger than it was before. Yeah, because I don't want this to reoccur. Yeah, why did it happen? Well, maybe, maybe it was a weakness in the hip, which was allowing a uh, inward rotation of the knee, which has allowed the, you know, an outward rotation of the ankle and then a stretch through the Achilles tendon and that's what's caused it, maybe. But either way, when I rehabilitate this ankle, eventually I'm gonna be doing it single-leggedly. So I don't even think single-leggedly is a word, but I'm gonna be doing it on a single leg, yeah? So I need my hip nice and strong to really make sure I'm effective in rehabbing this ankle. So I just got a band. If you haven't got a band, don't worry, you can do this exercise without one. I put it through my knees, over the top, and I'm just gonna lie on my side, knees together, ankles together, kind of about, you know, my feet are in line with my hip, and then I'm just gonna squeeze my glutes, lift my knee, hold one, two, down. I'm gonna consciously relax the glute, clench, lift, hold, one, two, and slow on the way down. Yeah, relax, clench, up, hold, one, that clock slow, two, and down, okay? I do about 12 of those. I tend to go quite fast up, hold, and then a very slow controlled release down. When I've done 12 of those, I'm gonna straighten my leg, lift my foot towards me, lock my knee out, clench my glute, and do the same to the hip height with the straight leg, and then lower, okay? 12 like that. What I would do, so this is a thing people talk about, why would you rehab the opposite side? I would then do the right, okay? And I'm not doing the right necessarily because I'm concerned about the right. I'm doing the right so I have something to compare to, yeah? So if I'm thinking maybe my hip was a slightly weak, 
but I'll see how that feels on the left, then I'll repeat it on the right. And if the right, you know, should, if it was a hip issue, the right should feel stronger. So then I've got something to measure to. So then I go back to the left and I'd work it until it matched how I felt on the right. Yeah. If they felt the same, I'd be thinking, okay, either both hips are weak, which I don't think they are, or it wasn't that issue. Okay. And in which case I may just stop doing that because you just got the time. You know, that's kind of disproved that it was a hip thing in a way. Yeah. Always good to do those exercises anyway, especially if you're a runner, one who's all one legged stability. Okay, but that's going to be day one. Yeah. So a bit of tape, a bit of a stretch, a bit of a soft tissue release, and a bit of a nice, easy glute exercise to check the activation and start the strengthening. Okay. We'll see what, like I say, you know, this is a real time injury, so I'll come back tomorrow um, and I'll show you what I'm doing, any, if I'm doing any different or if I've progressed. Yeah probably progress because I want to get a move on because I've got events to train for okay and then we'll take it through until it's gone and then hopefully this will give you quite a few tools you can use yourself if anything like this happens to you